Welcome to Waltham Watches. I'm your host, Kelly Hill, and with me is my co-host, John Peacock. John, yeah, we have a really Kelly. excited, yeah. exciting yeah, show today. We've got a great show today. We, yeah. uh, our first uh, segment is with Kali, did I pronounce it right? I hope. Kali. Patrick. Yeah. Uh, she, she's got a business called A Journey Into Hell, uh, lives locally here. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about what A Journey Into Hell is? Sure, sure. So I started out in software design which is a totally natural, a natural progression, move, right? natural <laughs> segue, yes, into health and wellness. And, uh, you know, my schedule was such that I was busy all the time, I was stressed out a lot, and I started trying to find ways to take care of myself physically and mentally mm -hmm. in, in that kind of uh, high-tech corporate environment that I was in at the time. So it was a purely selfish uh, beginning. What I noticed after experimenting for a while with techniques that I could use on myself was that my colleagues were also suffering in terms of their health. Mm -hmm. And they weren't always aware of it, but I would see things like everybody in a lunch meeting pretty much five days a week yeah. mm -hmm. and running to the cafeteria, getting something quickly and scarfing it down for five minutes before a meeting. And then, okay, now we're on to business. It's like, well, that's not really lunch break. There's mm -hmm. no downtime. And one of my, um, one of the memories that really got me started in this business was a manager who had been running around meeting to meeting all day, came into my office for a meeting with me, flung himself into my guest chair, and he's like, <sighs> not breathing. And he starts right into the topic of the meeting. I'm so sorry I'm late. I'm 10 minutes late. I, I was running around all day. And his energy just you know, sort of stressed me out. And I said, well, maybe let's just sit here for five minutes. Just breathe. Just take a break. We can get to it in a minute. And he said, okay. And I noticed in that five minutes that his whole demeanor changed. Mm -hmm. Just that five minutes of, of relaxing. And so I started to notice that I can have effect on, on my colleagues and help them, yes. right? And so often we forget that sometimes it just takes five minutes to, to slow down. And in 2012, I did my first yoga teacher training, never intending to teach, just, just did it for my own purposes. But at that point, I noticed too that for me, that sort of lifestyle helped me become a different kind of person. Okay. You know, it wasn't so much that type A perfectionist, go, go, go. I could actually find ways to relax. And so I decided at that point that I really wanted to help other busy professionals like myself find those little windows of time to slow down. Mm -hmm. so. So, so you mentioned your uh, yoga training. What other training um, do you have that, that has brought you to this point in your career? Yeah, so I have training, a uh, couple of trainings in yoga. Um, one is in yoga therapy, which is a little different from the standard yoga teaching. It's, mm -hmm. it's more for people who um, have chronic conditions or medical issues, sort of like physical therapy, but we add a lot of lifestyle and breath work and visualization meditation to that. I'm also trained as an eating psychology coach, so when I work with people on emotional eating issues, things like binging and overeating, mm -hmm. um, that training comes in handy. That's based mm -hmm. on mind-body nutrition as well. So, mm -hmm. And I'm trained in Reiki, which I sometimes use with clients. It's a s Japanese stress reduction technique and energy healing. Mm -hmm. I also bring a lot of my corporate experience and tools and techniques that I learned in my corporate training to work to working with people. So maybe that's prioritizing, maybe that's um, setting goals mm -hmm. and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of a unique blend of this, you know, high tech corporate world and alternative modalities. Right. So. Well, I didn't do any homework other than ask you to ask me a couple of questions here. <laughs> um, you have a website mm -hmm. and how do you promote yourself to have people get in touch with you for assistance? Mm -hmm. What, what are the, some of the tag words or words that you use to draw people uh, into your uh, business? So I primarily, I, I've learned over the years that there are certain conditions I really like working with people on. So as we were talking about a little bit earlier, I like to work with people on issues that are really long lasting. You know, mm -hmm. people have tried everything and they feel stuck. 
So things like insomnia, trouble sleeping, okay. chronic pain mm -hmm. is another one of the things that I specialize in, and emotional eating. So again, the binging, mm -hmm. overeating, stress underlies all of those. Anxiety and depression often underlie those. Mm -hmm. So I go out and I give talks on oh, okay. these these various issues. Uh, I'm doing a webinar actually on Friday on emotional eating. So regardless of where people are around the country, they can join and, and participate in a free hour long conversation about that. Okay. I'll be at the Waltham Health and Wellness Show on mm -hmm. April 8th. Very good. Right. So, um, you know, I love giving talks and so I, I speak at various libraries too. I think I'm at the Waltham Library at some point in the next couple months too, Great. talking about sleep. So I just get out and talk as much as I can. Now, do you have a, a calendar on your website of things that, that you, um, out talks and, and things yes, that you're going to yes. be out and about? There and is. On the okay. homepage at ajourneyintohealth.com, there's a section on uh, upcoming events. And people can also subscribe to my newsletter. So mm -hmm. I always talk about where I'll be. I do teach some public yoga classes as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they can find me there and people can also go to the website and schedule an introductory conversation so they can have 20 minutes with me talking about their particular issue because the coaching relationship is very personal and everything I do is very customized mm -hmm. and individual so it's important that we have a connection mm -hmm. and that we you know we get on mm -hmm. right. so so th there is a whole um, movement now that really does help in the corporate world the mind str um, mind body stress reduction do you, you uh, is do you talk to that as well, in in a lot of your like um, I, I in our classes at the hospital there were, we've we've had like just meditation like pure meditation just to, for an hour long during our lunch just wow. to well it <laughs> doesn't That's happen often <laughs> <laughs> well it was you know you have to sign up for the class but mm -hmm. it really did take a, a nice um, break to really you know uh, focus on yourself and your mind and your body and just bring the stress level down, and then you could go into the second half of the day and ramp up again. You know? Right, but the problem is a lot of people don't have that hour. Right. It's really hard to find that long a chunk of time, and so it, people think, well, I can't do anything. What I really think is different about the way I go about it is we, fi we find those five to ten minute windows, okay. and then, well, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And so I work with them, and like I said, everything is customized. So depending on what they're doing and where they're going and what their life is like, we work together to find different strategies. And maybe it's a breathing technique, or maybe it's a movement practice, or maybe it's something else that in that five to 10 minutes, they can do it and feel like they've taken the energy or the, the hyperness that we all live in and just tone it down a little bit. Now so. How are you different from other coaches? Well, I think We've already dis some we've that. discussed that a bit, right? I, I wasn't I've, <laughs> I've well, I've I've lived in that corporate world, sure. and I still actually do some consulting mm -hmm. for a software startup. So, it's it's I have one foot in that door, okay. and I have one foot in this sort of alternative space. So I don't um, I don't prescribe things to my clients. It's more of a collaboration, mm -hmm. right? We I learn more about their life and what they're dealing with, and mm -hmm. to some extent, I understand it. You know that they don't have an hour. Right. to sit and meditate or right. when they try to do something like that things come up right. so how do you how do you fit it into your life right. now, now that what I was describing it was only an eight-week course of course once a, <laughs> once a week but it still it was it was it was a good way to at least get an introduction to what to do yeah um, to bring your stress levels down now do you so you've got individual coaching but you also do corporate as well yes okay. I do I do okay yeah. so, so if, a, if, a, if a corporation or organization wants me to come in and give a lunch and learn mm -hmm. talk like that or uh, sometimes people want me to come in and lead a yoga class Mm -hmm. once a week mm -hmm. um, I do all of that so yeah, employee wellness is is really um, something that I think a lot of corporations strive for and it's and this is a key component to that you mm -hmm. know making sure that their employees are are are, are happy when they work don't well you think, rounded happy, well, yeah. happy when they work happy for the second half of the day <laughs> after lunch well. But yeah. Can you give us some examples as to how you've helped some people? Sure, sure. So uh, th this will be good because I work a little differently than a lot of coaches, right? Which I've is noticed. why I call myself a mind-body <laughs> wellness coach. Yeah. Um, so one of my clients was concerned about her sugar intake. So this is an, an emotional eating client. Mm -hmm. She was actually going through the Starbucks drive through every day and getting those cake pops, you know, the little oh. um, <laughs> balls on the stick. Yeah. She was eating two a day. Oh, wow. And she was kind of concerned that oh, not too much sugar, and I feel compelled to go and get these cake pops. And so while she wanted help with that, she was also a little bit worried that I was going to tell her, well, you must 
cut down to one or <laughs> you must stop that, uh -huh. right? Because a lot of people will focus on willpower and, you know, really working in that way. Uh -huh. And so I said to her, well, here's the thing. I want you to eat the two cake pops. Uh -huh. And I want you to, instead of just driving off to the next thing, which is the context that she described, I said, I want you to park your car and really just enjoy those. Like, this is your treat, right? So don't just hurry up and eat them. Sit in your car if it's, you know, the weather's not great, or get out and sit at the table, sit in the sun, sit in the shade, whatever, and really enjoy them. And she looked at me strangely, like many people do, because she thought I was going to take these away from her. Uh -huh. And she said, okay, I can, I can do that. I said, five, ten minutes, just pull mm -hmm. over. So uh, she came back after a week, and she was just beaming. And I said, well, what happened? And she said, well, the first day I got my two cake pops, and I really enjoyed them. And the second day I thought, well, maybe two, I, could get on, I can get on with one. So she ordered one, and she ate it. And she was like, yeah, that was really satisfying. That was really great. OK, and she went on to the next thing. So she did the one for a couple of days. And as we all do, she went back and said, oh, no, today I want to. It's been a, you know, it's been a bad day, a rough mm -hmm. day. I'm going to have two. And so she ate the two, but she kind of felt like that second one was really forced. Uh -huh. She didn't need it. Yep. So she went back to one. And so within a week, she cut down her, her intake by half. Mm -hmm. And she was so thrilled with it because it was easy. Right? It wasn't her trying to battle herself or fight herself or stop herself from doing something. What she really wanted was five to ten minutes to just sit mm -hmm. and chill out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so, so that's a way that I've helped somebody. A uh, simple example, but mm -hmm. I think it's really important to illustrate that, you know, we make things very difficult. We fight. We, we have a battle with ourselves a lot of times, and it's just identifying what it is we really need and then taking and honoring that. Right. Do, you, so. do, you find, do you find that people are just looking to talk with somebody about things? Oftentimes, yeah. I mean, stress is hard, and, mm -hmm. and when we are um, living with somebody or living with people we can't talk to, Sometimes just having somebody to, to mm -hmm. hear you is, is really stress relieving, sure. right? So, yeah, the second client I actually wanted to talk about was uh, my longest client. He saw me for two years. He was a chronic pain client, okay. and he had two herniated discs in his thoracic spine. And doctors said, you know, there's really nothing we can do for you. Here's some pain medications. Mm -hmm. And when I met him, he was, he was taking some pretty serious pain medications, and his, he was constantly moving, he was constantly moving. And I found out that the pain medications interrupted his sleep because they just wired him. So during the day to stay awake, he was drinking those energy drinks. Mm. So he was, just, oh. he was just a ball of energy and constantly moving. And that also disrupted his digestion, right? So he came mm -hmm. to see me, and he's like, well, they say there's nothing that, that they can do, but I don't really like I, I don't feel good, mm -hmm. right? So, and he was, he was really an ideal client, curious, willing to experiment, um, mostly willing to do his homework. Um, that takes a while sometimes, but consistency really does help. And so I gave him some movement and breathing practices that he could do when he was in pain, right? So sometimes if we have an injury, we behave in such a way and you know, we feel fine and then we do something that re-injures it or re-aggravates it. So those times when he was in pain, he could go to something and, and really feel that it made a difference for him, uh -huh. right? So he would go to a movement and breathing practice and feel like, wow, that just took my pain from an eight to a two. Do I need that medication now? Now, I don't, I'm not a doctor, so I never tell people what to do with their medication. Mm -hmm. But he made the decision himself that I can turn to this first. I'm empowered to do something for myself. Mm -hmm. And now I don't need so much. And as a result, then the energy drinks went down and his digestion improved, his sleep improved. When I first met him, he was out on disability. He wasn't working. And after the two years of working with me, and again, getting progressively deeper, right? Mm -hmm. He had a different tool for getting more energy. He had a different tool for when he was in pain. He had a different tool for when he felt good and wanted to feel like he was doing some exercise, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so he had a choice. And he really made a lot, of, uh, a lot of progress in those years, and he's back to work and doing well. That's wonderful. So. That's a great, great success story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was great fun to work with. <laughs> I've got two questions to finish up. We'll sure. only do one because the other one's too negative. What do you like, <laughs> what do you like most about your job? Oh, yeah, what I you do? love seeing the transformation that happens mm -hmm. in people. When, when health suffers, a lot of other things suffer, right? We're not able to go out and do the things that we really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, we're not able to uh, live our passion, right, to do what we're here to do. 
And so seeing people get back to things, like seeing this man getting back to work mm -hmm. and really feeling like he was contributing to his family and taking care of his wife and things like that, that's really, that's mm -hmm. really great. Sounds like you've had quite a bit of success. Yes, I like to think so. <laughs> but it's the clients who do the work, sure. right? I mean, if they don't do the work, then the success comes yeah, it's more slowly. That's a real feel-good situation for you when they do the work Absolutely. And, and get things right. done. Absolutely. Now, can you tell the audience uh, again how we get in touch with you? Sure. Uh, people can go to my website at ajourneyintohealth.com. You need the A in front of mm -hmm. Journey Into Health. Or they can go to callipatrick.com, K-A-L-I, patrick.com. They both go to the same place. Okay. And as I mentioned, I have the webinar coming up on Friday, mm -hmm. and they can also see me at the Health and Wellness Show mm -hmm. on okay. April 8th. So mm -hmm. We'll have that scrolling across the bar. <laughs> yeah. sure great. Yes. great. 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 Really appreciate yeah. you coming in. This well, is very uh, entertaining. Thank you for and having in, me. And informative. Great. It was a fantastic meeting you at one of our events at the Chamber of Commerce, and it worked. It, it, it yes, worked. It, I know. Fantastic. What a surprise, John. <laughs> we'll tell everybody how terrific the Chamber of Commerce is, too. Well, we, that goes without saying. You know, and Kali, welcome back to Waltham. Thank you. Know, you. It's good, good to have you back here. Good and to be back. We look forward to hearing more from you and, um, and looking forward to um, your webinar. I, I think if I have the time, I'm definitely going to join along. Please <laughs> sign up. Very yeah. good. I, I, Join I, the crowd. Yeah. Good. <laughs> well, um, hang on for just a few minutes. We're going to be right back with our next guest.